Good evening, merci que nous répondons à rendez-vous important ça aujourd'hui. Hein? Merci que nous répondons présent pour que nous parler de pays d'Haïti, la Caïnou, dans le mois que nous baptisons, le mois héritage culturel haïtien. Nous passons tout un mois à fêter, à célébrer héritage culturel. Ça. Nous chanter, nous danser, nous manger. Nous compas fès, je dis, on hein, a invité nous dans une séance de réflexion sur ce qui s'est passé dans le pays d'Haïti pour permettre à tout qui l'a comprendre non seulement ce qui s'est passé dans le pays, hein, mais ce qui est important, c'est qui ça nous a fait, qui ça que nous-mêmes qui vivons dans le pays, hein, qui ça que nous-mêmes qui concernés parce que nous répondons présents à ce soir. Qui ça que nous-mêmes qui dit que no matter how much Haiti fatigue there is elsewhere, we cannot ever afford to become Haiti fatigue. We can never afford to become Haiti fatigue. Donc c'est vrai que circonstances, conditions y ont été noir. C'est vrai que conditions y comme si nous avons nous pas ouais comme on a sorti. C'est comme si Jean Bagayou est là, nous vivons dans le cap que nous ne jamais, jamais, jamais ouais dans l'histoire pays nous. Mais nous connaissons tous que c'est même l'histoire pays ça qui montre à chaque moment, à chaque circonstance, à chaque moment historique qui posé devant nous comme peuple, nous toujours joignons une solution pour nous sortir dans sa vie. Donc nous souhaitons que, si nous rencontrons ça après-midi, avec Potomitan Focal, Fondation Connaissance et Liberté, qui fait des placements ça spécialement d'Haïti, y arrivé après midi en même, parce que justement l'encontre ça tellement important que y ont absolument fait tout sacrifice possible pour y là avec nous après midi. Donc nous souhaitons que premièrement tout le monde qui derrière pas avancé, il me dit vent s'il vous plaît, le ça ça fait nous sentir notre gens qui chaud, vous êtes très politique là, vous êtes avancé, merci, vous êtes descendu. Nous souhaitons que n'a pas apprécié le fait que le euh, Premier ministre ou le Dr Michel Pierre Louis fait des placements ça. Madame Lorraine Mangonès fait des placements ça. Toute équipe fait des placements ça pour que vous offrez nous une perspective de monde qui vivent dans le pays, de monde qui bataille pour continuer à donner l'espoir dans le pays, de monde qui bataille pour jouer une solution à la crise que nous avons traversée là. Donc, ça fait qu'en pile, en pile, en pile, peu content que nous même équipe sont là. Je souhaite la bienvenue, enfin, et plus risque que la vie, comme dit, bon vini, et bien, je souhaite nous bon vini, je souhaite nous bienvenido, je souhaite nous welcome, je dis nous merci en pile que nous l'avons avec nous après midi, hein? et euh, qui témoin encore rappeler nous, que nous tous qui là, nous là, parce que le pays d'Haïti concerne nous, nous tous qui là, réaliser que l'héritage historique et culturel que nous portons comme haïtiens et haïtiens américains, hein? Nous ne pas capables de quitter le privé. Nous là parce que nous réalisons que nous voulons participer dans une solution de sortir le pays de la crise perpétuelle. Ça. Et nous surtout là parce que we will never be Haiti fatigue. Can you, can you say this with me? We will never be Haiti fatigue. We can never afford to be Haiti fatigue. We can never afford to be Haiti fatigue. I need some conviction. We can never afford to be qui des autres fatigués, qui des autres disent, mes amis, on va comme ça, on va faire 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 ça, on Excusez-moi, c'est pas, c'est pas, non, excusez-moi, Léonie. Nous avons dit que nous agenda. Qui t'aime, premièrement, invité Mme Michel Pierre-Louis pour lui peut-être, dis-nous, en petit mot de bienvenue, et puis dis-nous qui ça vous voulez faire là sans que lui pas entrer dans la présentation que vous pourrez faire 15 minutes plus tard. Ok? Donc, Mme Pierre-Louis, aidez-moi à applaudir et accueillir. Merci 
Pierre-Ville, Léonie, bonsoir tout le monde. Oh, excusez-moi, Léonie. Je pense qu'on vit trop souvent en Haïti, je ne suis pas rentré. Merci en pile, Gypsy. Merci pour l'introduction. Effectivement, nous-mêmes qui vivons en Haïti, qui la donne tous les jours, et qui rencontre toute qualité de problème que nous comptons parler de yo yo, nous ne pouvons pas fatiguer. Nous ne pouvons pas foutre fatiguer. Nous ne pouvons pas foutre abdiquer. Nous obligeons gourmet tous les jours. Et l'ensemble, c'est ça que mène nous ici à Soya. Merci pour chaque grand monde qui vient là, à Soya. Nous rencontre ça. On dit que la raison qui te mène ici, en premier lieu, c'est que chaque année, depuis 4 ans, sans là, il y a une cohorte de jeunes haïtiens américains, haïtiennes américains, qui ont été des fellows et qui passaient une année pour apprendre community engagement mais qu'il n'y a pas à prendre sur le pays à tout. Et chaque année, dans le mois d'avril, Gypsy avec Léonie mené au Haïti, en général directement au Cap Haïtien, où il a visité Citadelle, et c'est toujours l'occasion pour le Avem passer une journée, deux journées avec eux, pour parler de pays à, pour parler de l'histoire de pays à, que je ne connais pas en général. Je vais même enseigner ça à l'université, donc c'est toujours un plaisir pour moi. Pour me faire tout un râle sur l'histoire paysanne, sur qui côté une sortie qui fait nous là, je ne veux dire. Et euh, Lorraine le a présenté le travail que nous faisons dans le focal. À ça, la situation paysanne est tellement dégradée que peut-être une sécurité. Gypsy t'es préféré pas voyager avec Féloï. Donc, au lieu que c'est Miami à Haïti, c'est Haïti qui vit Miami. Et nous venons avec tout un groupe. Et je suis très content que nous t'aies organisé. C'est ton idée de l'Orient je suis très content que nous t'aies organisé. Que nous t'aies venu d'abord avec vice-président du conseil d'administration focale qui c'est Mme Daniel Magloire. <applaudissements> Directrice là, qui c'est Mme Lorraine Magonès. <applaudissements> Et comme c'est nous-mêmes qui sommes grand monde, nous te disons nous pas mener l'autre grand monde. <applaudissements> c'est jeune nous pour nous mener. Et la mener jeune nous, nous venons avec des jeunes qui, dans le temps que nous allons passer là à Soya, vont témoigner de ça qu'ils même ont fait en Haïti. Ils vont témoigner de la bataille que ont mené chaque monde dans le domaine Pali en Haïti. Et je suis très content que eux même tout ont accepté de venir. Donc, nous avons bien temps fait connaissance avec eux, nous avons bien temps fait échange, conversation, discussion avec eux. En même temps, nous avons l'occasion de coûter. Ça, nous avons pu dire comment nous même la ouais, situation dans le domaine Payo et comment nous voulons établir des liens de communication, même de collaboration et de partenariat avec les Haïtiens américains qui ont mis à mille. Et que ça capable de faire à travers ce centre-là ou à travers l'autre organisation que nous avons. Haïti est dans une situation difficile, nous ne sommes pas capables de sortir là-dedans pour compte nous. C'est tout Haïtien, tout Haïtienne qui pour des capacités chita à parler. Nous avons un mode, nous ne pas entendre nous. Nous avons un mode, chaque fois nous essayons de créer un bagage, division pété dans le temps, nous et puis nous ne pas marcher. Donc il est extrêmement important que nous capables de coûter une autre, nous capables de tendre une autre, nous capables d'échanger une autre. Et c'est peut-être ça que nous menons, jeunes que nous menons ici. Je vais commencer par mes dames, évidemment, puisque quelque part, lutte que
que vous avez mené, c'est des livres extrêmement importants, chacun en sa qualité. Je suis très content de venir avec Vélina Élisée Chardy. Vélina, font un petit On a ici un proverbe qui dit petit, 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 red. Petit, ça va, et bien, même confiance. Et puis, c'est seulement qui dit. Lui-même, la reste pour le parler de travail la fait, de engagement que nous gagnons. Nous ne pas vendre ça pour le dire, mais nous avons des ouais que y a des jeunes journées jeudi qui ont engagé dans le pays, qui ont challengé le pouvoir, qui ont cherché côté corruption en Chita, qui ont demandé que justice fait et qui ont tout droit pour faire ça comme citoyen, comme citoyenne. Je demande à nous tout faire connaissance avec Alain B. Augustin. Alain B. Oula. Dans le domaine de l'Alain B, on a prouté que dans le domaine lié particulièrement qui c'est en agriculture, toute inventivité que le gagne pour créer des nouveaux chanels, des nouveaux chaînes, des nouveaux canaux pour que art et culture en Haïti capable de joindre des communautés qui vont chambre, capable de montrer ça qu'on fait, ni garder ça l'autre monde qu'on fait. Donc, je suis très content que Alain B va parler nous lui-même de ça la fait dans le domaine en et culture et qui est extrêmement important et qui est extrêmement novateur. Jétri Dumont. Jétri créé peut-être une média online ou un média en ligne qui d'ailleurs bon blog qui est à Ivo Force, non, déjà il est à Ivo Force, il blog qui est tout à Ivo Force, et qui vraiment lui-même tout. Et c'est ça qui fait mener je ne sais pas ici dans l'Afrique, je dis, hein, parce que ça a fait extrêmement novateur. Vous connaissez, en Haïti, il y a des médias tout partout. Et vous pas capable de sous poste radio là, chaque 2 cm, 2 cm, 2 mm. Bon poste radio. Cap blabla, cap canta, cap dîner pour le bagage. Eh bien, c'est heureusement que y a des jeunes qui ont même essayé de une relation au fait, une relation aux nouvelles, une relation à la recherche, une relation à l'investigation, et qui réussit fait que, euh, et qui utilise les nouvelles technologies et tout, pour être capable de gagner vérité, information. Euh, nouvelles, reportages d'investigation qui permettent nous bon l'autre horizon sur ce qu'a fait dans le pays et, et au même temps il a cherché un peu zone en calade. Nous sommes très contents de venir avec Nixon Bumba. C'est un gros militant. Un militant de mouvements sociaux qui est engagé un pile de travail dans le pays avec différentes organisations populaires, différentes organisations paysannes, différentes organisations de jeunes, et qui en plus travaille avec un bœuf. Un organisation, il y a parlé de ça, il y a même pas de mettre tout le caca de Et euh, alors ça qui est intéressant dans le travail que nous-mêmes nous faisons avec tout c'est que nous même travaillons en pile en République dominicaine. Et il est extrêmement important que nous soyons capables de garder l'initiative que nous avons fait ensemble entre Haïti et la République dominicaine. Il est capable de dire nous mêmes des difficultés qui gagnent, puisque nous avons des problèmes qui, qui gagnent avec la situation d'apatride et de anti haïtianisme qui existe en République dominicaine. Là. Mais en même temps, il y, des, il y a des canals qui l'ouvrent tout, il y a des perspectives qui existent. Il faut avoir intelligence pour comprendre comment pour aborder les problèmes. Et nous sommes très contents de travailler que un peu avec Nixon et l'équipe a fait la relation haïtiano-dominicaine. Nous venons tout avec Josué. Josué Roto. Alors, c'est Josué qui est parlé de Josué. Alors, Josué, son, son photographe remarquable. Belle petit garçon, tout. Nous photographons 
et puis merci encore pour nous tous, tant pour les garçons qui viennent participer dans le rencontre de la soirée et la conversation que nous avons gagnée sur Haïti. Mais suis content de vous, Edouard. Content pour nous. Alors merci en pile et bonne soirée. that would have probably not gotten the opportunity to express themselves and to articulate their vision for Haiti. So we are incredibly lucky to be here, not just having Madame Pierre Louis, but to have the entire, uh, an entire a group of young people, a group of staff members, board members of Focal, who come here to really begin a conversation. And this is something that I know that Gypsy and I have talked about for a long time. You know, we know that after the earthquake of 2010, there's this surge of interest from young people, from the millennials, to become more involved in Haiti. Uh, they wanted to go do rescue missions, do food missions, but you know, afterwards they became disillusioned with the idea of just going on a trip to distribute food, distribute medicine for one day, take the photos and come back home. Uh, so many are uh, constantly asking what, what, what else is there besides that day of you know, personal transformation, because everybody in town is transformed, but then what's next? Uh, what else, what are the mechanisms in place that could allow them to become engaged in a much more meaningful and sustaining way with Haiti? You know, one that um, uplifts the voices of Haitians and you know, engages them in a way that it, it, it goes beyond the sort of one day or two day mission excursion. So um, we, you know, the, the, the fellows is, was certainly one of the beginning um, phases of this exchange, of this idea of creating this bridge between Haiti and the diaspora so that whatever happens, happens in a way that has lasting impact, not just on Haiti, but on Haitian Americans. Uh, because we know that as we stay in this community and have to deal with some of the social issues that um, plague young Haitian Americans, we know that a lot of it is because they're not grounded in their culture. You know, they don't necessarily know their history. They don't un understand what really gives them that um, opportunity to stand tall. And so uh, this is really exciting to begin that phase, that conversation, that vision of the young people to express themselves and to, and to sort of let us understand what's going on and what is their view of hope. Um, so we're gonna start. Uh, there's gonna be, there's gonna be two phases to this. Uh, we're gonna have a panel of three to start, and uh, we're gonna, they're gonna speak for about 45 minutes, that includes, uh, well, less, uh, but with an opportunity for <laughs> question and answer, and then it's gonna be followed by a second panel um, of, you know, the, the, the younger people, <laughs> who the millennials, who will be sharing their vision, followed by questions and answers. So it's really with um, immense pleasure that um, I'm going to invite uh, Madame Michelle Pierre-Louis, Madame Lorraine Mangonez, and Madame Danielle Magloire to come forward. You see their bios because they're gonna have a half hour for me to meet them and the, their incredible accomplishments, not just in Haiti, but on the world um, stage. So, please come forward. 
And um, because these are women that you know they are the reference in Haiti. You can't you can't talk about Haiti. It's true, Lorraine, about social social justice movement, about anything without mentioning their name, whether it's you know Danielle Magloire in terms of the feminine, she should wear purple. <laughs> that's, that's a feminist symbol. Yeah. <laughs> we have, um, you know, Lorraine Magonez is the executive director of Focal. And if all of you, for those of you who don't know, if you know the Negmao in Haiti, who knows the Negmao in Haiti? Her dad designed it. So <laughs> just want to make you even closer to the Negmao. A personal connection to the Negmao. Next time you see it, you say, oh, I know, I know the, 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 the sculptor's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Madame uh, Michelle Jerry. So <coughs> let's get started. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Leonie. I will uh, just make a short introduction and uh, let Lorraine and Daniel, maybe Daniel first. Or do you want to go first? Daniel, should you call it up? Uh, yes, Daniel. Daniel will start. Uh, once again, it's 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 really a real pleasure for us to be here tonight and to engage this conversation with you and with the young millennials that we met uh, four years ago, three times, three cohorts, and uh, all the public which is here tonight. It's. Um, what goes on in Haiti today is very difficult to untangle. And perhaps, as I was telling Patrick Eliancy of TV Island earlier, probably the most difficult situation we have to tackle with today is what we call in Haiti the gangsterization of our society. We don't produce weapons, we don't sell weapons, and there are weapons everywhere. There used to be armed gangs in uh, specific areas. Today they are all over the country. And uh, even us, in our daily lives, this has a tremendous impact on our work. And it's very important that this be known, not just in Boemote, but really in taking into consideration what is the impact on, on, on society. And of course, each time there is gang violence, there are women that are being raped. There are young children that are being killed. There are professionals that are, that are being robbed and killed on a day-to-day -day basis. We live in the country. We know all the paramount issues that also exist in terms of weakness of the institutions, corruption, um, deals uh, everywhere, and nobody really looking at the country and seeing the real issues, the real problems that the population has to deal with on, the, on a daily basis. And it's true on all counts, mostly in the rural areas where the gangs have also penetrated. And we work with a lot of peasants' organizations, and it's extremely difficult for them. And uh, working with peasants' organizations in this country, when you know the history of the country, that has to do with a matter of justice. And when you cannot even travel in the country, to go meet with people, to discuss with them. It's becoming more and more difficult. You can imagine that those who've been marginalized for so long are even more marginalized today. 
So I will, uh, with that short introduction, I will let Danielle talk about her point of view, which is a feminist point of view. Danielle is members of feminist organization for the past 40 years, and the women's and feminist organization have played an incredible role in gaining um, steps toward women's rights and justice. And uh, she will explain her today, what, what she's working on today with a perspective perhaps on the gains that were done and that we fortunately uh, will have, an have had an impact on the whole society. So we work in this country, we love our country, we are engaged in our country. It's a matter of our own dignity, but we need you too. And, and I said it earlier, I don't think Haiti can come out of the situation it is in today without the support, the understanding, and the engagement of all Haitians, all Haitians Americans who believe in the country, who are honest, and who can try to s go above our so-called differences and build something that can really have an impact on the country. So Daniel, thank you. Thank you, I'm really happy to be here. And for this reason, I don't want to kill you with my <laughs> broken English. So I'm going to speak in Creole. Jean-Michel Dian, donc, moi-même, c'est un monde qui a brûlé dans le secteur des femmes droits mondes. Des femmes droits mondes en général, et en particulier, droits femmes actifs. Et ça, c'est un gros problème en Haïti. Et nous avons tout commencé par dire, c'est une pour moi-même, n'a rien qui est important, qui est important pour faire avec le monde dans la diaspora. Pour quelle raison, je voulais arrêter quoi que le monde change, le monde progresse, il y a une opportunité de vivre de l'autre expérience qui permet de développer de l'autre rapport à le monde. Et ce n'est pas uniquement parce que mon règlement la loi, dans le pays que tu as vivre là, je crois qu'à la fin tout ou même, pour les droits, vin croire la dehors, vin adopter principe ça. Sauf que sentiment que mien, impression que mien, c'est que dans échange avec Haïti, eh ben ça pas toujours passé. Ou bien il ne doit pas attendre assez. Ou bien très souvent peut-être euh, des questions pour elle, nostalgie pour rejoindre les bagages natifs natal qui ça camener corée en série de pratiques. Un petit exemple bien simple, qui apparaît en bas, banal, pourtant pas banal. Lors de, de, de mon rentrée, vous avez envie, et vous comprenez ça, vous dites, oui, manger natif natal pour le fait, Jean, ça te qu'on fait. Ça veut dire, pour mon chita, la pile en petit mi. Ok, c'est très bien. Sauf que, ou bien non, chabon, sauf qu'on va réfléchir sur qui est-ce qui a fait travail ça. Conséquence, c'est toujours même moun nan ka fèl, moun sa, puisque pour être au lieu servant au moulin, pour chita pile au pitimi avec Jean sa, ka déconstombré d'eau, eh ben, ou pas gen temps pour aller après un ensemble de bal, ou pas gen temps pour participer comme citoyenne, plus toute l'autre bagaille pour gagner, parce que c'est fi qui chita sous d'eau, donc ou pas gen temps pour participer, les discussions à fait, Supposé pays, parce que surtout, c'est bon vouloir. Il était fait des autres, c'est pour ça que ça n'a pas cité. Donc, ça, c'était pour dire en premier point euh, mes pensées. Mais le gros problème, non, nous, vraiment, bon, gros mésentente dans le pays. Hein. Jour, 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 dans le 21e siècle, nous n'avons nous, point côté ou à expliquer que. Fils et monde, et que vous avez tout. 
toujours bon explication. De temps en temps, mais c'est valable pour l'autre question sociale. Tout, oui. Bon, les décampés, par exemple, là, bon, c'est de, 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 de bandits qui a marché, fait de viol en groupe sous deux petits mesdames dans l'université. Là, son crime, son bail qui est inacceptable. Mais, ou après, j'ai une réaction, par exemple, je viens de vous mettre sur WhatsApp, sous les réseaux sociaux, sur WhatsApp, on nous donne un paquet de messages, sur qualité de commentaires. Bon, euh, pour qui ça, c'est dans le coup du soir, ils choisi d'aller, pour oh. qui raison, comment ils ont habillé, toujours. Même conception qui veut dire que l'on est victime, première question qui posait, ça a été fait, est-ce que le va tenter D'ailleurs, c'est une bonne déformation. La presse en Haïti, ou tant de passer la salle, il y a des gens qui sont morts, il y a des gens qui est-ce que le a fait comme qui dirait, si nous avons en fait, ça a bonne autorisation pour tuer, ça a bonne autorisation pour violer. Et toute l'idée, ça y ça qui est terrible là-dedans, dans pile vraiment, en pile, en pile, en pile bataille qui fait. Mais la bataille prend temps et nous gagnons des autorités qui récalcitrent en pile. Nous-mêmes qui vivons aux États-Unis, est-ce que nous avons imaginé que c'est seulement en 2005 que l'État haïtien arrive à admettre que viol est son crime. 2005, Soufie. Or, depuis son occupation américaine, première organisation féministe en Haïti prend naissance. Première question que vous posée, c'est question GI qui t'a aidé à faire caler Jacques sur Haïtien. Nous, tout le temps, ça prend 10 ans. Et puis, c'est en 2005. Et malgré tout, vous reconnaissez que vous avez arrivé à faire pour vous appliquer. Et ça qui est terrible, c'est que vous avez plein de politiciens. Ça veut dire, pas de gens, ou pas de monde qui, euh, dans de positions stratégiques, qui prend position en faveur de ça. Et alors, pour vous jeunes, pour être des parlementaires, pour être des ministres, pour être des directeurs, ou bien des directeurs d'opinion, pour vous prendre position clairement sur ça. Jamais. Et ça, c'est de, c'est de, c'est, c'est de bas qui doit interpeller nous. Pourtant, pour y autant de, euh, de jeunes haïtiennes, euh, américaines, ça arrive, euh, congressman, congresswoman, arrive dans l'université, tout le monde très fier. Sauf que ce n'est pas vrai pour nous-mêmes qui vivons euh, 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 en dedans pays. Ça veut dire à faire et l'esprit fait noir. Son bagage que dans sa yore, les élites, entre guillemets, que nous joignons qui vraiment. Euh, son bagage qui, qui est très bien euh, 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 distribué. Et pour finir, je vais faire l'autre marteau c'est que l'on société gain de travail qu'a fait euh, pour avancer pour faire respecter droit monde n'a regardé vraiment comment et euh, dirigeants politiques toutes catégories confondues malgré que discours toute la journée oui c'est pour malheureux c'est ceci c'est cela d'ailleurs par blague moi m'a dit que le jour pas bien la misère en Haïti m'a contre ça politicien a bien pour parce que tout discours agit à sous la misère. Donc le jour où ça va dans la misère, je ne sais pas parole il y a bien pour dire. Et pourtant, quand on parle de la misère, Jean-Maurice Sictoré me dit, yo ne peux pas jamais mourir dans le livre. Et ça fait me longer de sur un dossier que vraiment, qui, qui peut être dans le cœur, en pile, ces dossiers travailleuses domestiques, yo, bonnes, yo, servantes. Yo. Nous vivons dans un pays côté la loi pas définie pour être travailleuse, pour être travailleur. Donc, je ne sais pas si travaillé la carrière ou dit qu'on a travaillé, je ne sais pas si on a Depuis 2009, nous avons fait un petit bout de loi avancé. Côté qui sa loi ça dit, après un pile, un pile, un pile de 10 ans de bataille, pour une loi qui dit oui, l'on monde c'est bon, ils sont bon. Nous avons écrit ça dans le texte de loi, dans un pays qui fait 1804. Deuxièmement, pour dire, 
Comme la travail, il y a droit de bon jour pour prendre un petit repos. Mm-hmm. Ouais, extraordinaire. Mm-hmm. Troisièmement, journée de travail, il y a un lait pour commencer, il y a un lait pour finir. Mm-hmm. Et puis, quatrième bagaille, il y a un droit de congé annuel. Eh bien, droit arrive à passer. Jour, 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 par mon gouvernement, et ça, ça dépend directement du président de la République, là, pour vous servir en loi, il faut que vous publiez. Il faut que j'aime qu'à publier. Donc, tout ça pour ballon idée, on série de questions qui est extrêmement important Parce que le n'a regardé, côté femme travail, surtout femme défavorisée, eh bien, nous nous mettons de parler de usine. Eh bien, il y a plus de filles qui travaillent comme servantes, comme bonnes que les gens qui travaillent euh, euh, dans l'usine en Haïti. Et pourtant, il y a même une libre totale. Donc, il y a difficile, il y a une pile de bataille qui fait, mais nous avons un pile de gros danger. Et puis, le gros danger, je vous dis, ramasser tout le problème qui est là. C'est bon évangélique qui débarque. Et que tout discours, c'est pour expliquer. Bon, on ne nous pas fait pour citoyen, pour citoyenne. Pas occuper de bagages, parce que c'est dans le ciel qui était l'autre pour nous occuper. Poser politique pour vous, poser pays. Deuxièmement, pour l'ennemi, c'est femme. Et puis, c'est culture populaire haïtienne. Tout bagage. Vous comprenez? Et nous rencontrer ça, d'ailleurs, nous voyons. Le parlementaire qui a essayé de mettre nos codes de loi pour parler de Lougaou. Or, la map fait nous songer qu'en Haïti, les gens parlent de Lougaou, c'est femme qui est Lougaou. Donc, moi-même, je suis extrêmement inquiet. Je ne dis pour mon texte de loi que de monde voulait mettre qui dit que si de monde dit que c'est Lougaou, il y a mais ben, c'est pas en fou. Que... Oui. Donc, je ne sais pas. Et c'est vrai. What? Et c'est Nathan, ça, extrêmement. Vous comprenez? Parce que la radio, toute la journée, vous comprenez, il là. Mais son bail qui est Au fait, c'est le droit de tuer pour bail, parce qu'on n'a pas de preuve pour bail. Je dis que je suis un peu de retiré pour le monde, il est transformé, il est volé, il est rampé, et puis il fait l'autre monde tourner bête. Il suffit que je dise ça. Ce n'est pas grave sur tout le monde. Et ma fin nous songer que après 12 janvier, il y a plusieurs femmes qui perdent la vie sous base. Donc, ce sont gros bataille, même si doit être allongé spécialement sous la femme, mais son bataille qui rentre dans une bataille qui est plus large, puisque comme femme, c'est moun, yo c'est moun, yo c'est haïtienne, yo c'est haïtienne, yo c'est majorité moun qui vivent dans le pays. Ya. Donc, on ne peut pas qu'à foutre camper sous des pieds militaires si les femmes ne pas là-dedans. dishes that we're used to, what we don't realize is that sometimes, you know, the meticulous um, times of preparation takes a lot of time and remove women from, you know, the discourse, the communal discourse, conversations about engagement, etc. So that's one aspect. But um, briefly, she also talks about the condition of women. Uh, first of all, the idea of rape, um, that it became illegal in Haiti in 2005 in spite of the fact that women have been identifying rape as an issue since the American occupation, uh, mm-hmm. pointing particularly to the rape of... It became um, a crime. became a crime in 2005, uh, pointing to the fact that the GIs, the Marines, used to rape women uh, with total impunity. Um, and, and today, in spite of the fact that it became a crime, it's still difficult, you know, to... Um, 
to you know pursue these cases because there's always questions about well why was she there if she was with somewhere where it's dark or where there's a party what was she there what was she wearing we're familiar with these questions too here to some extent um, she also talked about the plight of domestic workers we're called maids servants and while they outnumber uh, the women who work in factories they're basically the invisible workers and their conditions again uh, working under uh, very exploitative, unjust conditions. And although the women uh, made attempts to legislate um, um, the working conditions, the, you know, saying that you know, even though, you know, yes, she's a dom domestic worker, you have to pay her a certain salary, she has the right to a day off, she has, you know, she's a human being, she has certain rights, it's still an ongoing struggle. You know, the plight of the domestic worker, mostly women, a majority of women, are still sort of the invisible, while the focus is on the minority of women who work in factories. And um, the last, you know, she made a lot of points, but I may want to be quick, is the condition, the, the impact of missionaries in Haiti. Um, the evangelical um, uh, zealots <laughs> who come into Haiti and um, are you know, uh, encouraging people not to get involved in the civic life of their country. Um, of course, attacking women, especially those who want to be independent. Um, and, and, you know, creating this environment of hatred, particularly against uh, traditional values, religious values. And so she's pointing to a senator who's trying to enact legislation that would allow or create a criminal category, and it's the Lugawu, the sort of the witch. And so she's saying that you know, for the most part, witches are women, the Lugawu are women, and that, of course, the standards are very loose and doesn't require that you take the person to court. If you accuse the person of killing a child, you know, uh, changing their skin, transforming somebody <laughs> into something else, you just, how do you prove that? And so these are crimes that cannot be proved and basically a license to kill people you think have different religious values. And she says that, that this is not something that's happening in a vacuum, there's precedent. Let's remember that post uh, earthquake, mm -hmm. a lot of people were killed, mostly women, uh, because again, the evangelical sector had uh, argued that the earthquake was caused by ha Haiti's insistence on, on you know, vo uh, practicing uh, voodoo. And so a lot of people who were considered the priestesses, the priests of voodoo were killed in Haiti. And a lot of them were women. So she's saying that the struggle is real. And, and uh, again, these are opportunities for young people to become involved uh, in the process. Last person. <laughs> Good evening. For the past three years, Michelle and I, uh, Michelle Perry and I, have been uh, have had the privilege of being invited by Santla and Leonie and Gypsy to attend um, the conclusion of the cycle that. Tri um, I don't know if it's uh, training or the, the cycle of the fellowship offered by uh, Santla. So a cohort of uh, young Haitian American professionals spends a year um, becoming familiar with the community here and also becoming familiar with Haiti itself. Um, and at the end of the year, the, the conclusion of the cycle is to come to Haiti, to Cap Haitien, to visit uh, the Citadel Saint Souci, to meet with some people, and to have a kind of a seminar, a work, small workshop with, with us. So it's, it's been an extraordinary journey for us. It was always something that we looked forward to meeting the, the fellows, meeting the fellows from Miami, from Santla. Um, 
we discovered many things. We started to have many questions in our minds about what goes on here, what their lives is like. We became more and more interested in who they are and who that general social group is. So young Haitian American professionals. How many, who are they, what is interesting to them? We became curious about the fact that we, we noted that th they were becoming engaged in their community and that they were also more and more interested in their country of origin or the country of origin of their parents or grandparents. Um, we, we were wondering what kind of exchanges we could have. We were hoping that maybe the next cohort, which would have been this year, could come to Port-au-Prince. Uh, we were, it, it's great to come to Cap Haitien. It's very interesting uh, to see the monuments, the very important moment, very emotional, very, very strong moment for, for all of us, for them and for us. But we also wanted to connect them to people working at Focal and because many of them are young, um, they are here, some of them are here uh, tonight. Um, and to show them that there are many interesting things going on in Haiti, that, that the situation is not all awful, that there, there is a lot of energy, that there are many ideas, that many people are trying to do extremely interesting things under very difficult circumstances. We wanted to show them what we do, but also what other people do. Um, we were hoping this was going to happen. And unfortunately, our country this year is going through one of its bad cycles. Um, we, we are all afraid right now. We all have the feeling that everything is collapsing. This is not the first time that it has happened to us, but here we are. And maybe whenever these moments come, we feel that maybe this is, the, the, this is going to be the worst one. That, and of course, uh, the United States and other uh, important countries issue travel warnings. And while this is often annoying to us in Haiti, but we also respect that. We, we don't want people to come and visit us and that something happens to them. We wouldn't like for the fellows to come and for them to encounter some horrible incident. And at the same time, it's frustrating because all of us are there. We, we live through uh, these difficult moments and we struggle. Sometimes we don't make it. <laughs> It happens a lot, um, but we, we don't like the idea of this separation because we feel that there is something extremely important going on with this generation, the, what, what we, are, we are told is the, the millennial uh, generation, people who are 20 something or 30 something and who are in Haiti or here and have a different type of energy. They have demographic strength, just mm -hmm. like um, the baby boomer generation had a, a demographic strength. There is a new energy. There's something may happen with this generation. And so we don't want to miss the moment when we might connect them, we might um, help them be inspired, we might um, bring things to them that they can do something with. So this is why when we heard that the, the fourth cohort could not come because of the dangerous situation, we said, okay, maybe this is, this is an opportunity for us to bring a little bit of focal and also the, the people that you are going to listen to now. Um, 
tell you about what they are doing, about their engagement. We are hoping that this conversation begins tonight, that some of it can continue tomorrow because we're only here for two days. And we're hoping that um, the conversation and maybe some action will happen uh, after this beginning. So this is basically what uh, I, I was interested in saying. Um, introduce one of our staff. <laughs> 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 maybe the youngest. The youngest, maybe. Eh? That's why I forgot. Let's watch him. Carl is our communication uh, coordinator. We have a newsletter that comes out every Thursday morning. Every Thursday morning with all the news that goes on in at Focal, but Focal. also anything that Nouvelle goes Focal. Nouvelle Focal. Nouvelle Focal, and he is responsible for our beautiful newsletter. Merci. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I also forgot to thank Miami Gate College, um, because they really did a great host, and we have a professor who also really supported us. Uh, professor, I don't know your name, but I've met so many of your students that <laughs> I just thought that I should recognize you, your professor. What's your name, sir? Miguel Murphy. Pardon? Miguel Murphy. Professor Miguel, Miguel, Miguel Murphy. Murphy. Thank you very much for your support. Can I just say something? Okay. Um, where we have about 10 minutes now for questions and answers. So we, again, would like to continue to focus on, you know, what can we do? And you know, if you have questions, are you open to answering questions about what's happening now in Haiti uh, or not? Um, so it's no censorship. No censorship, <laughs> okay. Okay, hi, my name is Rachel Tavanov. Um, I just wanna say, I'm, I consider myself a fellow of Focal <laughs> because Focal gave me a grant to come to Haiti and show my film, La Belle Vie. And it was an amazing, amazing experience, something I will treasure for the rest of my life. And um, I also participated in a film festival this year in Jacques Mel, that was also sponsored by Foucault. And it was a lovely uh, panel discussion with Maud, who was a moderator, talking about uh, turning books, our amazing books, into screenplays, and it was fantastic. Um, so to continue with the arts, um, because that's really, I couldn't talk about that. But <laughs> I think what you did today is, an, is a fantastic thing. You brought people, artists, who is the photographer? Uh, where is he? Oh, yes, I met him in Haiti. I met him on the 80 and he, we just, a fantastic photographer, allowing him to come here and, and maybe do an exchange where, you know, just like you have some of the millennials going to Haiti, allow him to come here and what does he see? Because I don't know, see si at courant in little Haiti, what's happening in little Haiti right now, yeah. but you know, in, I think what happens in Haiti is that people, you back up run what's going on here either. And so to have a brilliant photographer be able to come and show what's happening in, communi in Haitian communities outside of Little Haiti, to give Haitians a break of what's going on in their own country, to see what's going on in Chile, you know, New York, <laughs> TIT, everywhere. I think that would be brilliant. And then as an exchange, I think it's brilliant that artists like myself, Carl Juice, that we are able to have an opportunity 
to go to Haiti as like, because there's uh, this thing called artist residencies that's happening all around the country. Nonprofit organizations are sponsoring artists to come and do their work and get out of their environment. So it would be nice that Haitians here, uh, I know you have, you're speaking to the millennials, but as artists to go to Haiti and I'm sorry, not Port-au-Prince. <laughs> Haiti is not just Port-au-Prince. <laughs> you know? So I, I hope that you will consider doing an exchange, you know, where we can swap. I live in his house, he lives in my house. <laughs> I have to tell you, when Rochelle came back, she was she had an event, it was first come, first serve. That's how they do it at Fort Cal. <laughs> you had a great impact on her. And I, I want to introduce our photographer here, <coughs> Pulitzer Prize yes. winner. Oh. Carl Just is here. Um, so, yeah. we got one. We, we got have a cute one, too. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question here. Thank you, Rachel. Good afternoon. Thank you all. Lady Lou, merci avec exceptionnel woman. Ça a été là, pour tant que nous faisons tout fait. Lady Lou, merci pour tout le travail que nous faisons. Tout ça ici est natif natal. Nous suivons nous de près et nous voulons nous remercier pour voir nous qui vivons loin, qui fait que loi sur la paternité responsable capable de promulguer. Merci beaucoup. La question par nous, c'est que nous avons beaucoup de concern avec le harcèlement sexuel. Nous avons une chance de travailler dans l'administration haïtienne. Nous ne pouvons pas trop de détails. Nous ne pas aimer ça. Nous euh, constatons pas de cas. Nous avons que les jeunes qui sont vraiment qui exposés. Mais plusieurs fois, ce n'est pas un jeune qui est exposé, mais c'est la pression du directeur. Des fois, quand on met au pied du mur, il ne vient pas le choix. Parce qu'il y a un problème économique dans le café rage. Des fois, si on a qui manque, je ne pas dire manque de caractère. Je ne pas j'ai pas le choix. Je ne pas dire trop de détails. Ça, on ne dit Et puis, on a une situation où on fait le contrôle eux-mêmes. Des fois, on compte ça qu'on tourne. Des fois, il y a un coup. Il y a calé et puis il fait connaître ces petits mounioyés. Comment que nous connaissons ça, pour un temps pour la loi, la loi sur la paternité responsable, pour le voter, pour le vigueur. Mais comment que nous, mêmes féministes, voyons nous toujours tendre jusqu'à présent. Et nous faisons gros bruit, nous faisons gros écho, pas seulement bruit, nous faisons pile effet. Sous femme en Haïti, comment que nous continuer à protéger ces jeunes nous jeune fille, jeune garçon, contre gros bourreau, je ben me dis ça comme ça. Le petit monde qui fait 4 ans, la petite est dure, il a travail, il a connaissances de Balil, il n'a pas besoin de l'autre bagaille pour le Kembe là. Et si ça arrive, il a une victime, comment que doit comment que ça a protégé pour le papa sans bâtir Merci. I think you should answer. I was you 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 had the uh, you you have the, the the idea and you have the answer, right? You you're already thinking of doing ex an exchange with uh, a Haitian artist. Uh, you should start a movement. You know, you're you're. You've got you, the ideas. You, you're the ambassador. <laughs> Her question was about what, what, what should happen. I mean, there's a, there's a you know, lot of young women who go to school. Have, have, have their, go to school, then they go work for, in, in government, and they you know, they're lucky enough to have a job, and that job is con conting con contingent upon their um, allowing their bosses to have their way sexually. And so the issue of sexual harassment, sexual abuse um, in the workplace, and where you have all these young professional women 
who feel that they have no other option but to succumb to, to that pressure, to be raped or, or whatever. Eh bien, justement, ouais, oui, problème ça y est, tout bon vrai. Et Jean-Michel Tabien, maman, en plus de, de harcèlement, de harassment, droit de cuissage, hein, l'ipirette toujours. Parce que son bagage, qui en plus de violence sous femme, son conception très archaïque, qui, co qui correspond à de pratique, côté n'entend bien beau dans notre pays et puis que beauté dans la colonie euh, époque Haïti que colonie Saint-Domingue côté le ou chef là c'est mon qui c'est grand donc eh bien toute fille en vrai ou fait affaire en l'autre nègre faut que c'est ou couché ou. et pratique sa conception ça a été très fort effectivement l'administration publique son gros Gros, gros tête chargée. Et où est question la mise à parler de lien? Encore une fois, mon lot exploitation de mise à population, hein? ça veut dire de monde qui en position que on pouvoir non mais au peu importe le pouvoir, ça veut dire famille qui monde n'a pas qu'à payer l'école ou dit m'a payer l'école pour lui, pour être tout payer l'école. Ou comprendre nous dépenser 10 dollars au pays d'école pour un petit monde, il faut qu'on couche. Donc, pas manquer de générosité là. Et misère, effectivement, fait que non seulement il y a des gens qui ont des petits gens qui ont des pour coucher, pour qu'il y ait un peu de travail. Et au compte de ça qui est dû à cause de le Jean-Claude Duvalier tombé en 1986. Une première grosse manifestation qui fait, c'est 3 avril 1986. Et au compte qui slogan, mesdames, vous avez chanté, nous besoin de travail sans nous pas besoin de rendez-vous. Mm. Rendez-vous. En 86, c'est ça que vous avez présenté comme revendication. Revendication, ça va là. Et encore une fois, l'imariandé avec impunité et avec sitirance que haïtien à haïtienne gagnent. Ça veut dire, on exemple pour répondre bien à la question, gagnent non nèg qui sont autorités, activité, c'est ça. C'est marché fait ça, je dis, il est monsieur Josué Pierre, lui, le directeur. Comment non, je n'ai pas problème, je suis d'accord pour la justice, je vais signer pour ça. Non, parce que nous posons des actes sur ça. Et nous te portons victoire parce que le gouvernement, M. Mantelli, a été nommé ambassadeur en Belgique. Avec l'autre militante qui a goûté en Belgique, là, nous avons monté le dossier à Bali. La Belgique n'a jamais accepté pour nous accréditer. Mais là, nous sommes en Haïti. Il y a un poste qui est plus gros, il y a un Donc, il faut qu'on bien comprenne ce qui vivre et ce qui et mesdames qui ont courage de dénoncer. Il y a 12 ans et l'organisation de la famille, de la famille, de la famille, qui portait plainte contre le docteur Ernest Harrison dans la télévision nationale. OK? Non seulement il y monsieur ça on poste qui pire toujours plus il y a révoqué ti mesdames ça et pas de travail fait même pour une administration publique côté nous river marquer un point et ça tout c'est parce que une organisation qui en permanence dans parc industriel dans 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 Port-au-Prince qui est le CPFO sans promotion femme ouvrières côté vraiment nous gagnons une grosse conquête sur ça en termes de faire mesdames, vous connaissez comment vous réagissez, vous connaissez qui côté vous avez, vous avez, vous avez, vous avez un soutien. Et puis travail avec messieurs qui n'ont pas usine tout pour faire comprendre que ça n'est pas acceptable. Mais le gros problème, c'est un pile impunité et sitirance. Et jusqu'à présent, la loi, ça, eh bien, les parlementaires refusé de voter. Donc, oh, ouais, donc nous, nous, c'est ambitieux. Et au même tout parlementaire, 
son bonnes qu'a déjà fait, très souvent. Non, mais ça vous so, plaît sous ça. Et mesdames, vous dénoncez, vous avez étudié qui fait que ce il y a six mois qui concerne, vous avez voulu diffuser ça, vous avez compris ça, on comprend bien pourquoi. C'est sous DGI qui concerne justement dans tout réseau DGI. Yo. Comment vous traitez mesdames yo, parmi les administrations publiques haïtiennes que ce soit secrétaire, tout petit job ça yo, non, vous comprenez? Son paquet de filles qui gagnent, qui ont fait ménage. Donc, il y a tout le clientèle qui a, pour les gens qui sont des prédateurs, et l'impunité, et ne pas nous faire jamais suspendre, répéter, c'est l'impunité. Donc, là, on nous a fait un coup de courage, un coup de plainte, et pour que les plus grosses autorités dans le pays, ils prennent tout ça, ils ont un plus gros job. Ok, gain bije qui te veille. So, in a nutshell, impunity has allowed this practice to, to, to continue, and she says that it's something you know predates the Republic of Haiti. This is something that was you know almost feudal, <laughs> almost uh, dates back to feudal times where the master felt that he had the right of um, you know to rape uh, the women um, he owned or. She's saying also one thing that is interesting again from the role of the diaspora, a man uh, by the name of Jose Pierre, who's known, uh, been accused openly by women in Haiti for being a rapist and a harasser, et cetera, et cetera, was appointed ambassador of Haiti to Belgium, but that women, um, women's organizations both here and in Belgium were able to block his appointment. So again, that's, I think that, from that there's an example of what we can do here in terms of elevating the voices of women who, and, and in, in targeting men who are allowed to get away with impunity, impunity in Haiti. So we have one last question, yeah. and then we can pass to the second one. It's, it's not really a question, but it's more of a comment or a thank you, because it is a- uh, artist and the founder of Collective Six Enough, which is a network of uh, contemporary Haitian artists that are in Haiti. Um, I was so excited that I heard that you guys were coming here because um, I lived in Haiti for eight years and uh, last year when the political problems came, I was forced with one of the most hardest decisions of my life and that was do I stay or do I go? I have two small kids, so to make a long story short, I made the decision to relocate to Miami. But a piece of my soul, if not all of my soul, I left in Haiti. And um, hearing you guys come here and giving us this opportunity to talk, um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't gone out in months. But when I heard that Volca was coming, I was like, yes! Um, I think this is a great opportunity to create these discussions, Sutu with the you know, local Haitian community here, in the one year that I've been here, I've met so many amazing artists. You know, Rachel has really helped me out, telling me, you meet here, you should go here, check this out. And something that's common is a lot of these artists are dying to go to Haiti. They've never been to Haiti. And yet, in their artwork, you could still see traces of the soul of Haiti that's still there. Um, so I just want to say, please continue. <laughs> continue this. This is a treat for us all. Um, I would definitely um, encourage you to use the internet. We can have these discussions through um, web conferencing platforms such as like Zoom and GoToMeeting. Um, doing this once a week, once a month. Um, we can connect Haitians from all over the world together and to have these conversations because it's very important. Um, art is, is something that I've been so passionate about. It's like an obsession for me. So when I left Haiti and I came here, I, I lost it, you know? For a year, I lost everything. I lost my, my inspiration. And it just actually, this month, I started painting again. And that's because I'm going to Haiti next week. So I don't know if my soul was like, yes, you're going back home. Um, but anyways, thank you so much. Like, really, this makes my heart so happy to see this collaboration. And I really hope uh, that you can continue identifying organizations here in Little Haiti or in Miami, linking them up with organizations and just to create an exchange. Remember the internet, they can have manifestations, doesn't matter, as long as we have the internet, people can log in from their phones, you know, anywhere in Haiti. 
they can see that there are people here that care about what's going on in Haiti. Let's be smart, it's 2019. Let's use technology to our advantage to continue these discussions. Um, although I would love for you guys to come here all the time. That'd be awesome, you know? This is great. So please, 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 sorry, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to show you, introduce also, there's a young man here who created a, a drumming circle in Little Haiti. And you know, this is Francois Alexandria. And it's a fascinating space where these young, again, young Miami born Haitians are coming together. Oh. But um, what prevents you from creating that yourselves? Funding. Funding. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yes, but you you need to come up. You need to propose the ideas. Yeah, sure. yeah. and there has and to be your concept. And um, the 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 way that you see it working. Yeah. Then then there can be a conversation about funding. But but that's very important. That is, that is very important. You know, art and culture are probably the most important medium in Haiti today. And, and, and uh, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how precarious the life of most artists is, that's why actually we created our art and culture program at Focal, and we're probably one of the rare institution that is also the and perhaps the only, you know, because we realize how important art and artist and culture is in Haiti, and the creativity, but also the wealth for creation. And uh, so whenever the young people like you want to come with a concept, with an idea, and see how it could be operationalized, we're open. We're not open for business, but we're open for <laughs> art. You're close for business. All right, well, um, thank you so much uh, for you. your, your, your contribution to this discussion. Now we're going to, um, we're going to have a different panel. And so, as the ladies are, we would like to call Alain B. Augustin, Belina Elise Charlier, Jetri Dumont, Josue Azor, and Nixon Bumba. And since I don't qualify as a millennial, we're going to have. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to invite um, our. And try to understand and, and um, every corner where we can find this energy to bring justice and to create the, um, a humanity where love and solidarity should be the main value. But human rights provide this frame to that. And I take advantage of human rights to work um, early in my life with child on the street to work on human rights with Daniel, of course, and to work with peasant movement because my father, my mother was activist from the Colette Paysan. I didn't know before because every every three months or two months they went to the bookman. I don't know what's supposed to mean exactly. I start, when I studied university and I went to have an internship with uh, some peasant group, they said, yeah, we know your father, you know your mother. Wow, you know my mother. Sheesh, they are among us. I know, wow. And then, and I continue to, to work and I, I will get involved with the labor's uh, movement in Haiti and work with uh, so many aspects of social justice in the country. After the earthquake, I was, I had this privilege to explore and to work with LGBT <coughs> queer movement in Haiti. And you know what, it's like, uh, it is not enough, but it's, this is, a frame, using this frame to think about uh, the dignity of people and to think about um, the right that people have to live out of violence, out of misery, out of injustice, out of inequality. It is where um, 
the way I use human rights to do, to do this kind of job. And now, I think human rights and everything we are doing, G3, uh, Verena, RMBN, Josie, we are creating a new momentum in the country. It is not every news you can see and in, in the media is so depressing about Haiti. It's true, we have reason to, to be depressing, but it is, there is a new momentum in the country. It is huge to understand there is a movement, a strong movement since over 10 years. <coughs> to take the street, we show the power, and try to bring change, you know? And this momentum, we didn't, we haven't seen this momentum over like, since uh, 1996, where the huge social movement in Haiti had the dictatorship, we didn't see it. And we have, with petro with other issues, the cost of living, the social injustice, the social inequality, we have this um, appropriation and every level, even though in the diaspora, and the people can be play a very good role to create this momentum. So much challenge we have to face. Everything is in, in front of us. And since this moment, we invite you as a Haitian diaspora and all the people in this room to um, be part of this process to create and to transform this momentum and real strength and real force to create the Haiti we want, Haiti to be. Which we can't, we can't sleep. We don't have time to do that because the strength is in our, our door. It's not only because I just, I, I, uh, I left the country like one or two weeks and I, wa I, I wasn't able to imagine this uh, collective web in the country. You know, the young girl from the university was, you know, taken in and raped by, you know, very brutal people. It is not on our habit. We know there is what is something in the, in the society, but this kind of new, new worst thing in the country is something we can take advantage to consider change. This is the moment to, to bring change. I'm talking about the gangsterization, we, we have this history of using gang and poli at political level. And now gang is that the tools, the instrument to maintain power and to be reelected in the country. They find money, they find to pay every gang, gang member. You know, this is the moment, there is this momentum, and part of this momentum is that this brutal repression um, was of sort of like massacre saline, massacre for free, and there is to maintain uh, people afraid and to stay in their house, to like get the street and try to ask for um, accountability, to ask for justice, to ask for hand their impunity. This is what we are trying to say, I think, I think I'm so proud of, not only the, my generation, is that <coughs> this transmission was done by Michelle, or by Lauren, or by Daniel. I think when I, JT and I, we went uh, one day to have lunch together and, and we talk about Lauren. One of the main signs you can see on the, yeah, her face, she's so concerned. We are concerned, and it's true, but we have so much thing to do to transform this cons uh, consternation and, and we are forced to change our country. Mm -hmm. Hope is something we need to cultivate, to feel. Mm -hmm. And it is, yeah, it's depressive. There is so much better thing was happening in the country. What do you say, Jesuit? Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> So last but not least, Alan B, um, <laughs> you thought your moment was never going to come. Here it is. Um, so we talked a lot about you know social change, and um, interestingly enough, what you do is try to preserve um, and show us the value in our traditions and um, our cultural legacy, right? Um, and I kind of want to shift our focus in, in the interest of time into how you use that or how you can use that to help start bridging the gap between Haitian, you know, young Haitians living in Haiti and Haitian Americans living here? Well, <laughs> this is a good question. So, um, I mean, before answer the, I mean, the question, so I want to thank Focal and Sampla for inviting me and the others. 
it is a great opportunity for me to be here and then to speak to, to you. And I, know I, I have to say that I, I'm, I'm, yes, of course, I mean, by Festival Quick Quack, I'm working on preservation, cultural preservation, cultural heritage. But also, I think the big thing that we are doing here is in Haiti. It's, I mean, working on Loup Malaria, it's a movement. It's a big movement. It's a so social and artistic movement. We work with artists and artisans, they say artisans, uh, in a poor neighborhood. But uh, how, how can I start? Um, I, I mean, I remember when I, when I was 16, this is the first time I met uh, Paula Clermont-Pierre, which is a, uh, a storyteller. And uh, I had my first uh, uh, workshop with Paula. And they learned me a lot of things about uh, storytelling, about uh, Asian mu music traditional. And since this day, and I can say that this <laughs> workshop just changed my life. Why? I mean, I was um, I mean I was born in a family of everybody. I mean, it's a, like they they like partying. So and and, <laughs> and all, all of my cousins and my sisters uh, always go to the bar and I mean it always party. And and I am. Just because I met Paula and I, w I went to the library with Ibdek, and which is I mean, funding uh, by 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 Focal. and I have a different way between my cousins, between my sisters. They, I'm the only one who have a master's degree in the family. That I think this is I mean because of the art and the culture. And what I'm trying to do in Haiti is to use this medium, I mean, I'm talking about cultural, art and culture, and to change people, to, to change the life of people. And, and use art and culture to preserve also the traditional. And what can I say? Okay, all of, I mean, everybody says uh, in Haiti, they all, we are acculturated, right? They say that? Yes, but, but the thing is, there, there's a work that, 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 that we are doing with Quick which is, I mean, try to create something new. When people say, oh, okay, we, we, we don't, we don't, we, we don't say t storytelling or traditional music. So we're trying to create a festival who bring these traditional, uh, things, I mean, in the streets to, I mean, let the people know that, oh, okay, the traditional things doesn't die, so we can use them, maybe it can be uh, an economic, it can be an economic impact on them in the, on the, in the country. Uh, my English is so bad, so I try to do my best. To preserve your heritage. To preserve your heritage, so, yes, maybe I will try. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so, and uh, don't, no créer et festival là en fait qui permet que au moins qu'on travail qui fait de préservation et et de valorisation et travail de préservation et de valorisation ça li pral créer en même temps un double sens déjà on travaille sur décentralisation décentralisation par rapport à toute activité qui fait en dedans qui concentré en dans porte au prince de la d'Haïti et on le travail qui fait son travail qui en fait permet que monde capable aller en dans le local découvrir des autres aspects qui t'apprend qui t'apprend donc l'homme dit que euh, moi son moi son pur produit de, 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 de culture ou bien de or et c'est parce que on dit que ça change la vie parce que dès que je dis à la la Miami ou un bal festival qu'on pas ou bien à long bal qu'on pas c'est pas vrai que pas bon quoi que ce soit mais au moins c'est parce qu'effectivement on peut gagner accès à de l'autre bagage qui peut être bon mon lot tournure et dans ce ça avec des amis en, en 2013 2000, 2016 
2016, nous, nous, nous construisons un, un mouvement qui est le No Kangaria, ou We, We Take the Street. Et dans ce mouvement, à mon côté, nous allons et dans le quartier populaire. Nous travaillons avec des artistes et artisans et mener la culture dans le monde. Parce que je pense que si en fait la culture ça, es capable de faire un effet sur moi-même, ou est capable de faire une autre direction par rapport à la vie, peut-être que ça est capable d'aider nous dans une autre direction et impacter sur plusieurs aspects. Le premier aspect, c'est l'aspect qui a un rapport à la monde en tant communauté, qui permet que au moins nous travaillons sur ça. Cap ça nous capable de dire qui c'est permettre que nous cassons barrière et que il y ait des monde qui capable venir dans le quartier populaire ça. Alors, m'a parlé d'un mouvement qui commencé et en 2016. À ce moment-là, nous allons dans le village de Dieu, le village de Dieu, je dis à qui c'est repère Arnel au bon mouvement qui créé en 2016 qui a allé dans le village de Dieu, qui organisait et visite guidée atelier artistique, qui menait du monde tant que et Mireille, Pierre-Odin, Jérôme, en dans le quartier tant que village de Dieu, et qui je dis alors pas même qu'il y a accès à l'image. Donc, l'idée de l'interpréter le mouvement, c'est au moins permettre que, ou bien médium, ça, qui se culture là, qui est capable de réunir le monde. Réunir le monde parce que nous avons besoin de réunir dans le pays d'Haïti. Réunis parce que nous, chaque, j'avais dit dans l'intervention, nous, chaque, a vivre en bulle. Et bulle, ça y pas qu'il n'y a aucun pont qui peut permettre que, au moins, moi-même, ou pas le même espace social ou en condition avec Bélina, capable d'encontrer parce que pas qu'il y a des espaces qui, qui permettent que, au moins, nous, 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 capables d'encontrer et discuter, échanger et connaître nous, l'autre dans le pays. Donc, Imaginons en 2016, nous organiser une visite guidée parce que nous prenons l'arrière, c'est ça, son mouvement qui permet que et nous valoriser les artistes qui sont dans le quartier populaire, mais mener le monde tout en dans le quartier, mener le monde, casser les barrières, aller. Et nous arriver, nous aller, nous fonctionner, nous faire visite guidée à l'atelier artiste, et après le monde venir entrer dans le village de Dieu qui n'est pas une zone qui est accessible du tout, qui traverse tout Port-au-Prince, parfois qui sortit de son ville, qui descend, qui rentre et descendre des centenaires à aller dans, 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 dans le village de Dieu. Et de 2016 à 2019, je dis en là, nous permettent que grand forme de circulation qui fait en temps de quartier ça yo, avec de l'autre groupe monde qui pas qu'on a dans le quartier. Yo. Qui quartier ça yo? Qui c'est Bel Air, qui c'est Martissan, qui c'est Cité Soleil, qui c'est Carrefour Feuille ou bien Grand Rue. Donc, ensemble, activité que nous faisons, porter de nouveau mon monde dans le quartier, et peut-être même en d'un mouvement, ça, brassons un petit cop tout, les nous font gros fort, par exemple, que nous défendons dans Bel Air dernièrement, qui permettent que, au moins, nous une activité qui rentre économiquement. Donc, autant que nous avons utilisé, donc, ou bien art, ou bien culture, non? donc, nous sommes capables de dire que nous sommes capables de faire des choses avec elle, qui non seulement qu'à changer un grand monde, mais changer toute une communauté. Donc c'est la logique ça, et this is what I'm doing in Haiti, et this is my work, right? So, um, given the, the time constraints, um, you know, you spoke a lot about the work that you're doing, actually being mm -hmm. a barriers that exist in terms of people going to neighborhoods that they probably would have never ventured into. Um, and you talked about bridging gaps. And so I have um, two final questions. You can choose which question you'd mm -hmm. like to answer or you can answer both. Um, I think it's time for one question though, right? Okay, <laughs> so you can answer one or both um, and you can choose. Um, one question is how can we, uh, because as Sutma Fellows, we do travel to Haiti and I feel like um, me personally, it wasn't an issue for me, but I know that there are people um, and maybe it wasn't an issue for my class, which was class two of Salah Fellows, the best class, the favorite class. <laughs> uh, you know, we traveled to Haiti, we went to Okap, and we met, you know, amazing people, but I don't know that we had the opportunity to network with people our age. Um, and so one question is how can we build the, the, that bridge, right? How do we br bridge that gap between 
young Haitian people living in Haiti um, and those here. And um, if there's one thing, if there's one thing that you want a Haitian American here to see in Haiti or experience, what would that be? So you could pick a question for all of you. Uh, first of all, Festival <laughs> Kikak. <laughs> no, yes, no, yeah, I mean, the festival we, I mean, we take, we take place, right? In a June uh, 17, no, June 7 to 9. So I invited you. So this year, maybe it's too late to come to Haiti. Uh, but next year, so you please to come. So don't worry, it will be in June. But uh, but the, the first question was... Uh, Bridging the gap. Yes, but I think, I think this is, I mean, a, a first step, right? So we met today, so we're trying to explain what we are doing in Haiti. But I think also, I mean, for me, what is important for me is to identify, I mean, who is the same sector with me? I mean, who is in culture here? Who is, I mean, in the, in the, in the fellowship, in the fellow, who is in the invited you to the Tika next year? In Lugalari in Bel Air, because that was fantastic. She was invited and she wanted to come, so she knows, she knows about Lugalari uh, uh, and, and Crack, she was invited too. And, uh, I don't know why, maybe it's the, uh, because of the situation of Haiti, but she will. Yeah, but she's really, but she wanted to come. She, she's in high yeah. demand over here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, maybe next time she will be the, our, our uh, invited owner at Crack. Yes, but, but yes, I mean, what, what I was uh, trying to say is. I mean, it's very important for me to meet, I mean, some Asian American people, I mean, who is in the same sector with me, who is in art and culture, who is interested by Nuk Malaria first. Why? Nuk Malaria can be a, a great opportunity for artists in, in this neighborhood because we're trying to sell their arts. It's very important for us. This is not a movement that we, 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 we showcase I mean, the, the arts of how we, 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 we promote, I mean, their, their, their works, but it is, also, it, it is also a movement that we're trying to sell the arts. So if me personally, I can try to find, you know, a, people here who are interested by, by the, this type of arts, we can try to create something and then at, at this point, they will be maybe uh, have money in, in this country. I mean, they will be maybe living uh, <laughs> uh, there, up there. Yeah. But the second thing, I think we, it, I mean, it's 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 a first meeting. And I, I think also we can we can create after this. I mean, af after tonight, we can create a, a network. I don't know. I, I don't know if it will be a, a mailing list or a, a blog or I don't know to keep in touch and to try to, I don't know, maybe St. Black can, can do something, oh, me, I can be on this network, we can share, and the, bi the bios can be on, online, and the contacts, though we, I don't know. Yeah, and we I can use post. also the uh, 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 Ibo post, so, right. <laughs> Ibo post, um, let's talk, Jifli, uh, what are your answers to one of those questions? Um, it was Haitian American millennial. So what was the question? So how can we bridge the gap between you all in Haiti, um, and that, or um, if there was one thing in Haiti that you would want a Haitian American, maybe who's never been to Haiti, to see or experience, what would that be? Okay, here's what I think about to bridge the gap. It's I hope that the Haitian Americans will start to be interested in the reality of Haiti, and that. A, a lot of time, um, the the Haitian American I meet, they have that, they they ha there's two extremes. You have the extreme of the person who tells you that Haiti is the worst place ever. The person who listen to the radio show where they, where they have mm -hmm. all the time. So it's as if we're in a war zone all the time. And then you have another group of people who are trying to create something that is not real. Um, Haiti is not Haiti is not Miami. It's never will be. It, it will never be. Um, so we need to find a common ground. 
And the good way to do that is to approach Haiti in a sincere way, where you accept that you will learn from Haiti. There is some stuff that you will love more. There is some stuff you love less. But to be curious about Haiti. Start by reading the media, reading literature, be interested in art, reading Aibo Post, reading Aibo Post. <laughs> be, interested, be interested in art, um, not only the, um, the regular artisanal little artwork that we've seen in all Haitian households, mm -hmm. but trying to you know, learn who are our Haitian artists, what are they doing, um, what, 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 what different way of seeing the world they're, they're bringing what what different aspect they're bringing so it's that i think this is the most important thing just be curious about haiti and approach it in a very genuine what <laughs> yes um so yes approach it in a very very real manner don't 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 try to create a false reality um just be be real with haiti just be real with it Well, I was about just maybe not to say the same thing, but uh, um, to see it with like sincerity, to the curiosity, which is important, see the artists, their voice, but not only the artists, the people, and their humanity, and see them as people, like, uh, and you know, you see the, you, we could meet, definitely, not only here, but, uh, also other ways and it's not like you have to like everything because well we all have our preferences but open our ears open our eyes listen just like we all we also have to listen to the people here because we're here to exchange to learn and to extend our experiences so uh yeah i think really like uh, we should open our eyes to to the nation to the people Will, it would be very, very, very great. And only politics, which is really important. And to know that those matters too, because those are also politics. Because arts can be also politics. Because it's yeah, really, exactly. And uh, this can lead us. And not that everything is dark. There are, there are still our lights. We are lights. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 so, and a lot of beauty and not photoshop beauty <laughs> I'm telling you like real beauty like uh, and I am still like discovering my country still amazed by the people I meet on the street on a regular basis like faces people expression arts so many things so be curious and I need to be curious as well <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bumba. Yeah. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm not an artist. I play <laughs> just the music. <laughs> we document so We document documented yeah. every. No, but you can still answer. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would give my, uh, my own answer about this question. Over the last five years, I tried to encourage third generation from Haitian diaspora to have some interest to come to Haiti. I think this, this is something I invite uh, the parents of Haitian. Um, children, they are living in the U.S. There's so much things you talk to the, the, the children, to the young generation about Haiti, who, bl who block them to try to develop some interest and curiosity to Haiti. Um, we just, we are just, uh, just caught just we are on, on the other time, and Lauren also, we are talking about, uh, we should mention at the beginning, we can't change Haiti about this force we have, the, the Haitian diaspora. How we can engage with Haitian diaspora, then better understanding from Haitian diaspora to, to, to Haiti. For example, so much, I hear so much other generation, people, they are living in the US and Canada, they are dreaming to come back to Haiti, even though I did at the last day of their life, because they, are, they have this connection with Haiti. And we try to, I, my, my friend Deborah will pick up me at the airport, and we, uh, we have this discussion, oh, you can, we can develop something in Haiti. And she said, oh, there's so much initiative was fair. I said, yes, 
but we need to change the narrative, the way in which we try to operate with Haiti. And also we need, this is our, our part of our role to continue to change the relations to the political situation in the country and to create the better space and the better opportunity. Because uh, since the earthquake, we are here, Haiti is open for business, bring all people to have sh to provide show in Haiti. No investment really in the country, but the just working and vibe when we can invest in the country in a way where we can be sustainable and try to create space for the society of love, of, of respect, you know, of justice. Mm -hmm. Angelina, who opened up for us, and now we'll close. Yeah. <laughs> um, back in the 1960s, Haitians were traveling the world, going to countries in Africa, Congo, and that's how they started going to Canada and Quebec as well. And those Haitians were going there and they were teachers. They became doctors and everything. So we went ahead, left Haiti, and built other countries. That's what we need to do for Haiti. The same way in the 1960s, we went and we became the teachers, we became the leaders, and we built this country with the respect that it demanded. Because when you go to someone else's country, you learn about that country. And then you invest into the country, and then you become a good part, and, uh, and, uh, and you become a heartbeat of that country. I think the same thing needs to be done for Haiti. Or Haitians, Haitian Americans, Haitian Canadians, whoever you are, people who carry Haiti in their heart, need to have that same sincerity and humility of telling themselves, you know what, it's time for me now to go back and build my own country. With that same respect. Because a lot of the times what you perceive to be Haiti is not and um, it's a story I always like to tell, and it's one I always observe. You are in Miami Airport. Everybody is behaving. Uh -huh. <laughs> you land into Port Prince Airport. <laughs> you know, this is what we need. We need you who have learned how to do better to teach our children in Haiti to teach me how to do better. Don't pretend that because you're going back to Haiti, you're going back to the trash, so you become trash. You are not trash. You're not trash. I think we have one down here. And 